This says it took place. Tennessee's Shelby County Board of Commissioners has voted unanimously to reinstate Democrat Justin Pearson to the state's House of Representatives. Representative Pearson was one of two Democrats that was expelled by the House's Republican supermajority last week for participating in anti-gun protests on the chamber floor. The other lawmaker, Justin Jones, was also just reappointed to his seat. And now both Pearson and Jones will serve as their own interim replacements until the Tennessee's upcoming special election. Joining us now is Associated Press reporter Kimberly Krusey. Uh, Kimberly, we saw the, the, that moment, a unanimous decision. Uh, when will Pearson actually be back in office? What are the next steps for him? The next steps is that he has to be sworn in. We saw very dramatically earlier this week that Representative Justin Jones walked from the Nashville City Council to the Capitol steps and took his oath and that within minutes, he was his name was back on the board, uh, the voting board in the Tennessee House. The Tennessee House meets tomorrow, and so he has until today and then uh, to be sworn in, and he will be come. He will be allowed back on the floor and be a full voting member. What's fascinating to watch is as Representative Pearson was about to be expelled, he delivered what's being called the "in the well" speech, as he spoke about you know. His position representing his people is kind of an affront to democracy to kick him out for being so vocal about gun reform, something young people really do support. Um, he's characterizing this as a movement now. Um, Republicans, though, will see this much differently. How do you see this moment playing out in the state? Might Republicans challenge him for his position or might they listen to what seems to be a groundswell of emotion and support on this issue? You have to be um, reminded that just two weeks ago, Nashville experienced a fatal school shooting that sparked all these protests for gun control. The Tennessee Democratic Party has struggled to reach national status and get the attraction and donors for, for years because of the Republican supermajority control in Tennessee. The, what has transpired over these past two weeks has undeniably, as you said, kicked off a movement and focused a lot more attention, but also resources and bodies that are interested in, um, you know, it, in partaking in what is going on in Tennessee. Um, we also saw yesterday the governor, uh, Tennessee Governor Bill Lee, had called on lawmakers to pass legislation that would keep firearms out of dangerous people's hands. You know, it's still a Republican supermajority here in Tennessee, but even that, just calling for that legislation was a step forward that we had not seen yet of the governor. Uh, Kimberly, staying on this thread about um, how both uh, Justin Pearson and, and Justin Jones have become these national figures, um, I, I want you to help us contextualize this because Nashville, a red state, the supermajority, there are, are three um, Republican representatives for every one Democratic representative. But in the case of Pearson and Jones, they represent Memphis and Nashville, two areas that are more are are urban, uh, that are cities in the state, uh, and they say that they are responding to what their constituents need, and certainly the votes by their uh, the, their county commissioners uh, echoed that in putting them back into office. What is the, the lay of the land in Tennessee politics in terms of what they will now be able to accomplish and? Will any movement be able to happen there in Tennessee, or does this need to happen um, either on a national level or really on a city level uh, to affect any of the change that these representatives are hoping for? Right. So the Republicans are still going to have that supermajority control in the state house. However, having Democratic members like Representative Jones and Representative Pearson and Representative Johnson in mm -hmm. Knoxville, the, the Tennessee three, they provide a voice and a pushback. It is, you know, they, they might have a minority control inside the house and also in the Tennessee Senate, but they have it. They serve as a reminder of the voters who sent them there, who are pushing for different points of view, different types of policy. If, you know, there had been no Democrats on the floor, we wouldn't be talking um, largely about any other point of view. We would largely think that they're just there is just one point of view, and that is just the Republican Party having. So even though there might not have, we it, it'll still be it's still TBD on whether or not they're going to have the votes to pass any sort of gun related legislation before the end of session. They will at least be able to voice their concerns and their points of view and push for their policies of what their voters sent them to. 
to do. When they expelled Jones and Pearson, those voices were taken away, even briefly. But it, it, that was the largest concern is that you are disenfranchising the voters who sent you there. Mm -hmm. um, but for a very long time, Memphis and Nashville have always butted heads against the, the Tennessee Republican supermajority. There's a lot of bills out there um, looking to, way, to take away their aut autonomy and hopefully you know, micromanage how these cities are run because they are democratic strongholds in a red state. It seems like it's a microcosm for the country, and I think that's why it's resonated in so many places. Um, there is a sentiment from people in urban areas that more guidelines, more gun reform, sensible legislation needs to be passed. At the same time, people in rural areas don't want to see restrictions to their Second Amendment rights. Um, our correspondent Mark Strassman said that for Republicans, this had a bit of a boomerang effect, right? Their effort to silence a group ended up giving them a bigger national platform. Any evidence from Republicans in the state that they're rethinking their strategy when dealing with Democrats who they disagree with because of all this? You know, um, when when the Nashville Covenant school shooting took place, both speakers in the House said that they would they were open to meeting with any lawmaker and open to any ideas. Uh, not necessarily would they pass that legislation, but they were open to any ideas. It is still fairly early. Pe Representative Pearson is still not yet on the House floor, but he will be given the opportunity to reintroduce legislation. Um, it will be interesting to see um, who is going to sponsor the governor's. Uh, if anyone, if, who will be sponsoring legislation to look at some possible gun-related legislation that would keep firearms from those who would danger themselves or others. Um, again, I, I still think it's a little early about whether or not it's going to come in monumental change, sure. but but it, it is definitely um, part of something that is starting started here in Tennessee. Yeah, re really incredible to watch this all unfold. And as Representative Pearson said there when he was reinstated, you can't expel justice, you can't expel our voice, he says. And so we'll watch how this all unfolds in the future. Uh, the AP's Kimberly Crucy, thanks for joining us today. Thank you.